So, how can we improve these problems with GANs? And how can we generally improve problems with moat collapse? Lots of people had lots of ideas there. You know, like we can use uh, we we can use JSD divergence. Uh, we can use auth movers distance. We can we can do something about weight decay. We can give it an L2 loss objective. There's so many great ideas that people came up with on how we could make GANs better. Now, these ideas are often based on um, on mathematical intuitions, and sometimes mathematical um, intuitions are great, but sometimes they just hide that there's things that we don't really understand yet. I can highly recommend uh, the paper on how well uh, GANs learn densities, non-parametric and parametric results, if you're interested in more details there. So, Given these, all these mathematical ideas, and there's countless papers in this list here that deal with different, dyna uh, different ideas on how to make GANs better. So, did the, all these mathematical ideas succeed? Well, did anyone find a magical, well-working formulation that is not as, doesn't feel as hacky as it is right now? Well, let's see. Let's say we want to measure how good a GAN is. What does it mean to evaluate how a GAN works. It's very difficult. Now, like, we want to produce images that are kind of like real images. How could we know that? Here's a very simple intuitive idea, which is the Fréché inception distance. We take the inception network and um, we use uh, uh, the, the fully connected 2048 uh, neuron width layer. Now, if GANs produce the same probability distribution as images as the real world, we would expect at that layer that the two of them are very similar. Now, like, what does that mean? It means that at some level, all the means should be the same of each feature. Now, like, if we have a feature at that level, that feature should be matched. And of course, the moments should be matched. The easiest is the variances should be the same. Now you can say the first year, uh, inception distance combines those. It asks how the means are different, and then it asks how the variance structure is similar here. No? And now we can say, well, how similar are they? And now first, this, this FID really makes sense if you apply it. So what we have here is we have FID on this axis versus various different kinds of disturbance levels. Now you can say we add some color noise, like adding a little bit of color noise. Yeah, like there's a good number of photographs that look, uh, look like that, but still the FID goes up. And then if we add a lot of noise, the FID goes up an awful lot. If we blur it, the FID goes up. If we do some rotational things, it goes up. Interestingly, only very little. Look here, this face to a human clearly doesn't seem right, but, uh, but suddenly the activations higher up in a conf net may be quite similar, which is actually interesting because it means that there's something missing there. And then we can add individual random pixels to it. And, uh, uh, and, and more and more, and you can say that we already start having very different levels if you have, we have small amounts of this extra noise there. So FID kind of makes sense as a measure of how real stimuli are. And then we can look at the FID score for the various different GANs. And what we can see here is A, across restarts and with different hyperparameters, there's a huge variability. It looks like the same network can have an FID score as low as 15 and suddenly much, much higher. We have that for the different data sets here. They look at MNIST, Fashion MNIST, CIFAR 10, Saliva, lots of different, uh, different models. But the upshot is huge variability. And also the upshot is not one of them is clearly better than the others. So despite all these good ideas, they don't seem to be helping all that much, at least not if we take FID as a measure of quality for a GAN. 
Now, there's one thing that I, sh I should have mentioned about FID. Why might we expect that FID are a good idea? You can say at the very output of inception, we have object categories. So a good generative model should produce object categories at the same frequencies as we have it in the real world. But you can say we might want to go down a level further and say we want to kind of not just get the object categories, but maybe poses, maybe like additional parameters, right? So therefore, close to the output of, uh, of uh, an object recognition network, we might expect the kinds of things that we would ideally like to keep constant here. Now, here's an idea of improving certain things, which are conditional GANs. There's some things that we can easily do. Um, at least make sure that every class comes with the right frequency and cannot be mode co collapsed away. So in a, normal, uh, in a normal GAN, mind you, we put in Z, which is a random vector, which produces cats. Now we can add the, the properties of, uh, of, the, of what we're looking for here, where we could say, well, we instead take Z and we give it, code it, the, ca the class here, one hot encoded. Alternatively, we can take this one hot encoding and add it to the image inputs, which is how we do it in practice. And then we can say here we have different cat breeds. Now, like this could be Russian blue cat breed. This is another Russian blue breed. Both of them would be one hot encoded maybe as one zero zero at the end of this. And then here's Conrad's kind of a cat, which would be like zero one zero and so on and so forth. There would be different cat breeds here. And now the discriminator importantly needs to get that same information. Now, and like if the discriminator would basically get this information, here's the image, and the label is that it's Conrad's kind of a cat, the discriminator would say, no, that's definitely not. Whereas here, Conrad's ca kind of cat, probability would be high, uh, would be uh, would, that it's fake would be much lower. Now, let's build a conditional GAN. First, sample the labels or just take them out of the data set and then have the label be part of the input to the GAN. Build a conditional GAN. 